Doctors could be on the brink of a breakthrough. Migraines. How to control them. Tame a migraine. A severe migraine. Throbbing, recurring headaches. Given all the noise, navigating the migraine experience can be confusing and scary, but you do not have to do it alone. Welcome to the Migraine Guy podcast, the official podcast of themigraineguy.com and theheadachereview.com. Now, here's your host. All right, everyone, this is the Migraine Guy podcast. Thank you for subscribing or at least listening. If you're just listening, if you're new to the podcast, I hope that you'll hit the subscribe button on whatever podcast platform you are listening on. Additionally, if you're listening on Apple Podcast or iTunes, I hope you'll take a quick moment to go over there and leave a five-star review for the podcast along with some kind comments about why you like the pod. All right, this week's podcast is actually a, uh, a second take for me. I had recorded a full podcast about an hour ago, but realized that the audio that I had recorded for it was very, very poor because I had selected a couple wrong settings on my computer. So this is a second take, and since I don't have um, uh, the full time again to record a full podcast, I'm going to bring back up one of the archives, uh, bring a podcast out from the archives, excuse me, uh, in order to uh, give you some content for this week. Now, um, the reason I'm doing this particular one is because the Migraine Research Foundation just announced a grant, um, a $200,000 three-year grant to study cannabis for the acute treatment of migraine. This uh, research is being um, done by Dr. Nathaniel Schuster of the University of California, San Diego. He'll be investigating how each of the chemicals, uh, specifically THC and CBD in cannabis, affects pain intensity, photophobia, which is light sensitivity, phonophobia, which is sound sensitivity, and nausea as it relates to migraine patients. And additionally, he's going to be studying the uh, potential psychoactive side effects of taking uh, THC when you have migraines. And all of this is very, very um, important, not just because it's going to help migraine patients get migraine relief, but also because it's going to help substantiate that cannabis and cannabis byproducts can have a very, very prominent place for chronic pain patients uh, in their uh, arsenal in order to regain control over their life. And so this is very, very awesome of the MRF, the Migraine Research Foundation, to be funding, especially since it technically is a, a federal crime to, uh, to, to fund these kind of studies. Um, and so I assume that the, the places that will be getting the money in order to do the studies will, of course, be in states that have uh, at least medical cannabis legalization um, versus other states that do not have it. And um, so, so it's just very cool that they're doing this. And so I'm going to go ahead in the show notes below, give a link to the MRF, uh, to the Migraine Research Foundation's uh, blog about this grant. Uh, someone actually emailed it to me who works for the MRF. And so thank you um, for sending that to me. And we're just going to take a deep dive into the uh, probably about a year and a half old podcast that I did on marijuana and migraines. Um, most, if not all of the information is still up to date. I'll tr I'm trying to edit some of the older information out that maybe has been supplemented by new research, but I think everything that you're going to hear is going to still be current. So if you haven't, uh, as I said, subscribed, I hope you will. Now let's get into the content. First things first, marijuana can be a controversial subject. For those who disagree about marijuana's place as a recreational drug, the kind of questions about, well, should it be legal for anybody, at least over a particular age, to go down to a dispensary and get whether or not they have a medical prescription for it? That's not the kind of question we care about here on this podcast, though answers to those questions are in important. And I think, in fact, I do have some answers to those questions, but that is not the topic for today. No. Today, we're going to be looking at the research behind incorporating marijuana into an overall treatment plan between you and your doctor, at least perhaps something derived from marijuana, if not marijuana itself, to help alleviate migraine pain. The important word to get comfortable with is the word cannabinoid. 
Cannabinoids are the compounds that are secreted from marijuana plants. Well, they're the compounds that we care about. For our purposes, we're going to be discussing the two most well-known cannabinoids, THC and CBD. THC, or tetrahydrocannabinol, is the compound in marijuana responsible for the psychotropic effects you experience when you ingest marijuana. While this can be fun, it is also unpleasant for others. CBD, or cannabidiol, is a compound in marijuana which research is beginning to show could have an effective prophylactic, i.e. preventative, uh, aspect for headache and migraine sufferers. Thus, if you were worried about taking marijuana for reasons that have to do with maybe losing control of yourself because it's a, quote, drug, or just don't enjoy being high, then CBD-based products could still be the kind of marijuana-based product that you should look into. Most CBD products, if you look at them, uh, exclude THC at all. Some products, if you're interested in getting uh, a CBD and THC product you can, but typically the ones that are marketed as CBD oils, CBD vapes, uh, that kind of stuff, they're going to be only CBD. And so you're not going to have to worry about any of those psychotropic effects. Now, uh, somewhat recently, uh, scientists discovered what they've called an endocabinoid system, ECS for short, that actually is in our bodies and is responsible for a large amount of activities that go on on the cellular and biochemical level. This ECS is the group of endogenous cannabinoid receptors located in our brains and throughout the central and peripheral nervous systems. Um, they're responsible for uh, a number of things, some interesting things that we care about as headache and migraine suffers is that the ECS system attempts to maintain homeostasis by reducing pain signals from traveling to and within the brain. And so if you can activate this ECS system, then you might actually see a pain reduction. You might not be feeling the certain amount of pain that you would feel otherwise if you can activate it appropriately. And as you can tell, since it's called the endocannabinoid system, and the uh, kind of uh, compounds that we're interested in are called cannabinoids. Yes, we can stimulate the ECS system externally from something outside of our body, either THC or CBD. And so that's the, uh, that's the connection that we really care about. That's why a marijuana-based product can help is because it's going to interact, it's going to stimulate this ECS system. Here is uh, just a sampling. I think I've got three quotes. Yeah, three quotes here uh, from research over the last 10 years about, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Cannabinoids. That's right, the word I forgot. Uh, cannabinoids and migraine. Quote, migraine, fibromyalgia, IBS, and related conditions display common clinical, biochemical, and pathophysiological patterns that suggest an underlying clinical endocannabinoid deficiency that may be suitably treated with cannab cannabinoid medicines, end quote. Another study concluded, quote, this study confirms that a dysfunction of the endocannabinoid system may contribute to the development of migraine attacks and that a pharmacological modulation of CB receptors can be useful for the treatment of migraine pain, end quote. Now, CB receptors there is a uh, uh, CB receptors are part of the overall ECS system. And so it was saying that if we can modulate the receptors in the ECS system, it can actually be used for the treatment of migraine pain. Uh, final quote here, quote, cannabinoids in particular have a long history of use in the abortive and prophylactic treatment of migraine before prohibition and are still used by patients as a migraine abortive in particular, end quote. All of these quotes come from studies, which are linked to in the show notes below. So go ahead and uh, take a click on those. Read the studies if you want, uh, if you have access to some of the journals that they come from, and get a little deeper into the research if you want to. But those three quotes, I thought, really summarized the 15 or so studies that I looked at, and that was pretty promising. Now, 
it has to get personal, right? You got to do some actual experimenting with this stuff. It can't just be all theoretical. So on a recent trip with my wife, we stayed a few nights in Denver, Colorado. We live in Nebraska. Colorado is a fairly short drive. And so we just went there. We, we went to see a comedian as well. Uh, but the, the side reason was definitely because marijuana is legal uh, in Colorado. And so we wanted to go there so that I could get some. Uh, and given the fact that my migraines are over 15 uh, times a month, right, I'm a chronic sufferer. And so I was pretty sure that in the three days we were going to stay there, I would get at least one pretty intense migraine that I would be able to test out with some uh, marijuana product. And so that is why we went. Now, Colorado is one of a number of growing states in the U.S. that is legalizing marijuana for both medicinal and recreational use. Now, whatever your stance, as we said, on recreational, given that I don't actually have a doctor in Colorado, it being recreational meant I was able to obtain and test marijuana's efficacy without a prescription. And so this was a real plus for me. The fact that it was legal rec uh, for recreational use meant I could obtain it without a prescription and so I could test it. Truth be told, what I really wanted to get was CBD oil, uh, only as I just don't enjoy the psychotropic effects from THC. I don't really like uncontrollable laughter. Uh, that might sound weird, but I just it's just not pleasant for me. Um, cost, however, really determined my decision. A 10-pack of the edible gummies that we got, uh, each gummy had 10 milligrams of THC, uh, and there were 10 gummies in the package, uh, was $25, whereas the dispensary we stopped at was selling CBD oil uh, in the $100, $125 range. And I know you can purchase CBD oil uh, much cheaper online, and in fact, I do have some on the way. Uh, but at this particular dispensary that we were at, uh, and we didn't really want to go shopping around primarily because I had a pretty intense migraine, we just wanted to go into one place and get out. Uh, we just ended up getting the gummies, so I don't have the experience with CBD yet, but I do have the THC experience, which is what I'm going to be talking about. So we got a container of gummies, as I said. 10 milligrams per gummy, and there were 10 gummies in the package. Now, uh, as, when we purchased it, uh, I had about a level six or seven migraine on the one to 10 pain scale. Uh, the pressure I felt, however, was almost off the charts, you know, close to 10, uh, maybe at times over 10. Uh, it felt like my jaw was going to just shatter from a sensation of clenching it too hard, even though I wasn't clenching it at all. Uh, I'm sure many of you understand that sensation. Uh, and I had been feeling this way for a, uh, coming up on three hours. It was you know, progressing over those three hours, but at the end of that three-hour point when we were leaving the marijuana dispensary, it was really, really intense. Uh, we'd been running around Denver for a bit, and the migraine was getting progressively worse. Uh, the dispensary itself, I just wanted to describe it to you, um, seemed kind of like a half jewelry store, half bank. When you first walk into the store, you find yourself in a small corridor, a waiting room. Uh, there's a large steel door in front of you, which is locked, and to the side of the steel door is a sheet of plexiglass with just a small slot at the bottom. Uh, whoever's working uh, the the door at the time takes your ID through the slot, checks to make sure uh, you're over 21, and then hangs on to your ID until your transaction is complete. So uh, that's kind of how you walk into it. Then they call your name. Since they have your ID, someone opens the door. You walk inside, and then the atmosphere drastically changes into one designed around helping you, the customer, find exactly what you need. Instead of being kind of cold and prison-like, it turns into a very, very personal experience, which is kind of a an odd but nice uh, to welcome to transition. Uh, once you're inside, you either know exactly what you want and simply tell the uh, employee, or you kind of talk to them, ask for a recommendation, describe what you're looking for. Uh, all the transactions are handled in cash, at least all the ones that I've ever heard of. Uh, I think there's one or two banks that will actually uh, process transaction for marijuana dispensaries, but most of them do not because it is still a federal offense to uh, handle money from a, quote, drug, <clears throat> a drug transaction like that. And so uh, given that banks have to uh, adhere to federal law. Uh, the federal law says that marijuana is not the kind of thing that you can buy and sell. 
uh, legally. And so even though states have one rule, the federal government has a different rule. And this is a pretty uh, big issue currently um, that just needs to be addressed in a reasonable manner. But we won't get into that either. Uh, many dispensaries pay them, just a funny thing to know, many dispensaries actually pay their employees in cash, file their state taxes in cash, and file their federal taxes in cash. So they can't open bank accounts because of federal laws, but they do have to pay federal taxes. So the government always gets its money, I think is the bottom line to learn there. Okay, so that's the that's the process of getting the marijuana. So once uh, acquired, my wife and I went back to our hotel to test out the gummies. Now, the thing about edibles versus smoking, to keep in mind if this is what you end up doing, is that edibles need to digest, whereas smoking it, it goes into your lungs and is almost immediately absorbed into your bloodstream. And so when you do the edibles, when you do the edibles, you have to give it some time after eating. So if you get some edibles for yourself and eat one and then maybe 20 minutes later, you complain that you don't quite feel like it's kicking in, uh, and so then you pop another one, you will eventually find yourself feeling the effects at a much, much more extreme level than you would have had you waited a little bit longer from the single edible you took at the beginning. Knowing this, I simply popped one gummy, and then we laid down, uh, lay down on the bed and kicked on the cable, watched some HGTV and just kind of waited for the THC to kick in. Now, I, I had brought my migraine hat, but didn't use it even though I was in a good amount of pain because I just wanted to see what the 10 milligrams of THC in this little gummy would do on its own. Now, about 30 minutes later, I noticed that I started to want to laugh for no apparent reason. The more I attempted to stifle my desire for la uh, to laugh, the stronger the desire actually became. Uh, truth be told, this is the side of marijuana that I don't particularly care for. I don't like the kind of out of control feeling that uh, uncontrollable laughter brings me. It just isn't that pleasant. Uh, however, I did begin to notice uh, that the pain of my migraine and the associated pressure in my jaw did start to diminish almost the moment that I kind of wanted to have some uncontrollable laughter. Uh, in fact, I'd say that the migraine was at about a level four just after the 30 minutes since I had taken the edible. And so that's a two point pain reduction in just 30 minutes. Uh, and so take that sumatriptan. <laughs> Uh, over the course of the next few hours, though my giggles did continue, uh, the pain relief continued also. Eventually, the pain went down to about a level one, and while the laughing actually got a little bit more intense, uh, it wasn't as annoying given that I was so happy that the pain had gone down. I was able to enjoy myself uh, on vacation with my wife for at least a few hours. And that, that was a pretty new experience for me, given that I had a migraine just a little bit before. Uh, and so this was a very, very welcome consequence of taking just a single 10 milligram THC gummy. Uh, typically when, you know, the pain is at that level, it's at that, you know, level six with really, really intense jaw pressure. I typically retreat to uh, my little uh, office room. Uh, you know, I've got a few ice devices with me. I've got my migraine relief glasses on. Uh, uh, and I'm, I'm also feeling, you know, an intense kind of anxiousness because I know it's going to hurt. I know it's not going to go away quickly and I'm just going to have to take it this night. However, I was so pleased and could just relax. In fact, it was the kind of thing I thought I could get used to. Uh, the next day of vacation was nearly identical. I had a migraine at the same level. And then once we uh, got back to our hotel, I took another edible. The pain diminished basic, uh, basically the same way, steadily reduced over the course of a few hours, though the giggles did make a comeback. Most important, I was able again to enjoy some time with my wife and just relax. Something that is pretty rare when you get 20 migraines a month like I do. The one thing that, in addition to those darn giggles that I noticed, was that my sleep seemed to be somewhat messed up after taking the edibles. Typically, uh, I take about a one and a half milligram spray of melatonin to help me sleep. Uh, and when I do that regularly, I can get about six to seven hours of decent sleep. There's some tossing and turning, but overall six to seven hours. 
Uh, the when I took the edibles, however, they made me uh, sleep extremely deeply, but it was only for about five hours, and then I was awake. The second night, again, I got about five hours of very, very deep, kind of comatose sleep, but then I was up. The third night, I had the same thing. Uh, I was still taking my melatonin spray, and so the only uh, different factor was the edible, and so there was something about it that was uh, messing up my sleep. Now, maybe I'm just very, very sensitive to it, given that I uh, almost never have THC, uh, unless it's these kind of circumstances, uh, and so that could definitely be it. I'm sure there are ways to work around this, and I'm seeing, as I said, fairly wet behind the ears here, so I wouldn't call this a negative, but just something to be ready to adjust for if you don't regularly ingest uh, THC. But overall, my experience was great. I got the pain relief. I got time with my wife. Uh, and this was time that otherwise would have, you know, forced, I would have just been isolated, uh, waiting for the pain to go away. Uh, the cost, though somewhat high, ha ha ha, uh, for gummies was about the cost of a pack of triptans, but worked much better than any triptan I've ever tried. Uh, so that was a nice benefit also. So, should you try it is probably a question you're asking yourself. Well, it really depends on a variety of factors. Some questions to ask yourself. One, is it legal in your state? Does your job drug test? Would your family or friends be upset if they found out? All of those are kind of the, the uh, housekeeping questions you need to ask yourself before you try it. The questions you should ask yourself uh, that have nothing to do with your actual migraine. Uh, another series of questions to ask yourself uh, is... Are you ready for some of the potentially negative side effects? Intense paranoia is not fun, but could happen to you uh, should you uh, use a THC based device. This, uh, these side effects can be very scary unless you have, you know, a friend, preferably a very sober friend there to help keep you calm, maybe a set of friends to help keep you calm. So a question to ask yourself is, do you have someone to trust that you could take the, the marijuana based product with so that they could be there with you should you have a bad reaction. Another set of questions to ask yourself, uh, it's important to, uh, well, I guess this isn't a question. Another thing to keep in mind is that it's important to remember there are no migraine cures. cures. Marijuana, while very promising for many, is probably not the silver bullet we want it to be. There is, however, a growing body of research dem demonstrating the benefits, and this should encourage us. I do have some CBD oil on the way. And this is very exciting for me since, as I said earlier, I do not like the psychotropic effects of THC. CBD oil, again, as I said earlier, doesn't have any of those psychotropic effects, but does have very, very large benefits for pain relief. Some people on the CBD for migraines Facebook group, for example, have claimed an 80 to 90% reduction in migraine frequency after going on CBD oil for a few weeks. Now, I know that's not a scientific study, it's simply anecdotal evidence, but that's the kind of uh, evidence that gets studies started. People saying, hey, this thing works, we should do some research, and that's what I'm going to be doing. Now, I don't know how well it will work for me, but I will make podcasts about it, so you have something to look forward to. So that's going to be the end of this podcast. Thanks for downloading it. I hope you'll subscribe on whatever platform you get your podcast from. Also, if you're new to migraines and a bit scared about what's happening to you, I have a free ebook that explains the basics of migraines, what prescriptions you can probably expect your doctor to prescribe, as well as tracking charts for your diet, medications, and migraines. Tracking is probably the single greatest thing you can do to help you and your doctor understand the many factors surrounding your migraine. You can get this ebook for free. Just head over to theheadachereview.com and at the top, click ebook and then free ebook. Catch me on social media. Just search The Migraine Guy. And until next time, audience, take it easy. And remember, you are not alone. If you want to help keep everything that The Migraine Guy does free, then you can become a patron over at the website, patreon.com. That's P-A-T-R-E. 
patreon.com patreon lets people contribute funds to other people whose work they value becoming a patron does things for me such as allowing me to buy new products so that i can do product review videos so that you know whether or not a uh, given migraine product actually works before you buy it it also helps me do things like upgrade the microphones and cameras for both the youtube channel and this podcast and more importantly it helps me be accountable to you my migraine community you can pledge as low as a dollar a month if you want to and every single dollar does help just head over to patreon.com slash the migraine guide to become a patron today